So you've decided you want a VPN. Obviously, I, someone appearing on a channel and website called Top 10 VPN, think that that's a good idea. But what we should really be considering is why do you think that's a good idea? What is it that you want your VPN to do? And more importantly, can it do that? Worry not, I would never pose such a threateningly open-ended question without also providing an answer. Or to be more precise, eight answers. Join me as in this video, I'll walk you through eight of the most popular things you can do with a VPN. Plus, and perhaps most importantly, I'll also cover some of the things that a VPN will not protect you from, just so that you can get a nice rounded grasp of the situation. I'm Callum, you're watching Top 10 VPN. Let's get started. The way that a VPN functions and what it actually does on a technical level is really pretty straightforward and kind of limited. A VPN does two basic things. It hides your real IP address and it encrypts your web traffic. But by doing just those two things, it has a massive impact on how you can use the internet. Let's take a look at the eight most useful and important things you can do with a VPN. And disclaimer, yes, I know there are more things you can do with one, but we haven't got all day, so feel free to yell about it in the comments to me if you like. Protect your online privacy. Yeah, you probably knew this one was coming first, even if you know nothing about VPNs. But that's with good reason. In my professional opinion, it is the number one most important reason as to why anyone should be using a VPN. Like we touched on a moment ago, a VPN encrypts your web traffic and spoofs your IP address. This means that your ISP can't see what websites you're visiting and those websites can't see who you are. When you connect to a VPN server, your real IP address, which is a unique identifier used exclusively by you online, is replaced by an IP address belonging to the VPN server that you chose to connect to. Not only is that IP address different to your own, but it's also likely shared by a bunch of other people who use that VPN too, so you're anonymized. The extra layer of encryption a VPN applies to your traffic means that it's almost impossible to decipher if someone were to get their hands on it, and even your internet service provider can't see what it is that you're doing. They aren't perfect privacy catch-alls, but VPNs are a simple and affordable and important first step to reclaiming some semblance of digital privacy. Stream geo-blocked content. Geoblocking is when a website is only available in certain parts of the world, usually specified to within a country or countries. Lots of streaming services are geoblocked. For example, BBC iPlayer can only be watched in the UK, Hulu can only be watched in the US or Japan, and Netflix has a unique library of content for each individual region that it's available in. By changing the region you appear to be in using a VPN, you can trick those streaming sites into showing you content that was previously inaccessible to you. Maybe. Because it's not that simple. Obviously, sites like Netflix are patently aware of this trick, and they go to surprisingly great lengths to try to stop it. You need the right VPN to unblock specific streaming services, one that will spend lots of resources ensuring that it has fresh sets of IP addresses that haven't been blocked by the streaming sites that you're trying to access yet. If this is something you're interested in doing, and I have a hunch that it might be, then take a look at our roundup of the best VPNs for streaming linked in the description. We've spent thousands of hours testing VPNs across dozens of global streaming services so that you don't have to. Stay safe on public Wi-Fi networks. We've covered online privacy a bit already, but this is a particular, specific scenario that's worth talking about, even if it retreads some of the same ground. Public Wi-Fi is undoubtedly hugely convenient. I use it on my train every day on my way to work to go and make videos about VPNs. You probably use it too, at hotels or in cafes or even at your school or office. It's not just convenient though, it's also dangerous. The absolute best case scenario with public Wi-Fi is that everything you do is visible and tracked best case. Whoever runs that network has complete control. It only gets worse from there, though. Other people using the network, should they have the know-how and a sinister motive, can also see who you are and what it is that you're doing. It's actually pretty easy. We replicate it ourselves in a private testing environment all the time. Using a VPN while connected to public Wi-Fi is just common sense, I think. Now, anyone who can see you on that network won't know your real IP address or the websites you're visiting, and you can do things like online banking a lot more safely. Unblock websites and defeat censorship. Obviously, legally streaming a movie you wouldn't normally have access to is a fun little perk, but for some people, blocked sites can be a lot more serious. In 2023 alone, we recorded 196 instances of internet shutdowns over 25 different countries. The internet is also regularly, consistently censored for hundreds of millions of people all over the world who are just like you and me. Even the UK, where I live, has a history of overzealous website blocking. A VPN can often be the only way to get around this. It can also be one of the hardest things for a VPN to do. A VPN can obfuscate your traffic, which is fancy tech speak for saying that it doesn't just encrypt it, but it also makes it look like it's not a VPN traffic at all. If it's successful, then users can bypass government or ISP-level website blocks to access a free internet. If the VPN isn't good enough, then nothing will happen. If you're watching this video on YouTube or the Top 10 VPN website, then thankfully you're probably someone not heavily affected by this. But one day you might end up traveling to a country that is. Make sure you have a VPN downloaded and installed before going. Torrent files securely. 
Yes, you can use it for a lot of things, but regardless, torrenting is an extremely effective and popular method of file sharing. It's also pretty insecure. If you've ever torrented before, you've probably noticed that when you connect to a popular file, you can see a load of different IP addresses with a bunch of flags next to them. Well, those are all real people's IP addresses and locations, and one of them will be yours. And every one of those other IP addresses and flags can see it. I mean, it's, it's great you're all working together to get that file downloaded faster, but Surely there's a less revealing way to do so. VPN is a solution here. By connecting to a VPN before you open your torrent client, the IP address and location of the VPN server you connected to is what's shown instead of your real details. Using a VPN also prevents your ISP from seeing what you torrent, so no more chance of copyright trolls harassing you for your downloads. Avoid bandwidth throttling. Net neutrality is a hot topic, and a complex one, but at a fundamental level, it means that your ISP cannot throttle traffic or accept paid prioritization of one form of traffic over another. Without it, we live in a world where ISPs can deliberately slow down your internet if it thinks that you're using too much data, or sees you're doing something data intensive like downloading large files or streaming in high resolution, or even if it just sees that you're using the internet at a busy time of day when a lot of other people are online. And honestly, even ignoring net neutrality laws where you are, there's still reports and suspicions suspicions of ISPs throttling users anyway. It's something that's hard to determine and prove given how, if your internet home is anything like mine, speeds can fluctuate pretty wildly over the course of a day. A VPN can prevent bandwidth throttling. As your ISP can't analyze your traffic and see exactly what it is, then it can't determine whether or not it's something to throttle. Save money shopping online. Ah yeah, now we're getting to the good stuff. Right, I always talk about how if you want a good VPN that you're going to have to pay a little bit to get one. And that's true, but the great thing is, you can make back that small cost of that VPN in savings. You may not have realized it, but most services or digital products that you buy online have what's called regional pricing. If you live in, say, the USA, then you're going to pay likely more than what's asked of someone in, say, India, because of various economic factors like average salary and cost of living. In some cases, by using a VPN to change regions, you can access those cheaper prices and get the exact same product you're going to buy anyway for much less. And seriously, I'm talking about much less. You could save 60% on your Netflix subscription every month, or 50% on every game you buy on Steam. There's a ton of things it works with. It also stops retailers from following you around the internet. If you visit a website to look at a booking for a hotel room, go away, and then come back later and look at that booking again, that website might try to charge you more as it knows that you're interested. Using a VPN can put a stop to that. Just don't get too excited about all those other videos and websites claiming that you can use a VPN to get massive discounts on flights. We've tried that and that one isn't really true. Connecting to an office network. Sorry, this last point isn't quite as exciting. In the modern working from home age, it's VPNs that allow us to access our remote office files safely wherever we are. Business VPNs create a secure tunnel between your device and the servers in your office, wherever that may be. These business VPNs clearly serve quite a different intent to what we call consumer VPNs, which are the VPNs I've been talking about in the rest of this video. Your business VPN won't do many of the other things we've covered, and a consumer VPN definitely won't get you access into your work secure network. Also, just a heads up, if you end up running both your consumer VPN and your business VPN at the same time, it can break both of them and make your device start acting funny. Obviously, I've never done that. That would be stupid. Just thought you might like to know. We know what a VPN can do for you now, but in broad terms, what can it not do? What are some of its limitations? Now, from a privacy and security perspective, there are five big factors I think it's important to consider just so you don't go out there getting yourself into trouble without realizing it. Here's five things that a VPN won't protect you from. Cookies and trackers. They are a menace. Cookies and trackers are tiny files stored locally on your computer when you visit a website that allow that website to remember who you are the next time you come back. They can also follow you around the internet to be accessed by other websites so that you can be served ads more relevant to your browsing history. They suck and are annoying and bad, but unfortunately, a VPN is not the solution to them. Well, some can be if they have built-in blocker for cookies and trackers, but that's not super common. Instead, try disabling cookies and trackers in your browser settings as best you can and adding an extension that can block them. Browser fingerprinting. A bit like cookies and trackers, browser fingerprinting is when websites glean information about the hardware and software you're using rather than information about you personally. Browser fingerprinting can work out your operating system and version, the model of the computer or smartphone you're using, the language you're using, even the resolution of your display and its size. It rolls all that up and loads of little more bits of information to create a surprisingly accurate profile of who you are to then follow you around the internet and identify you reliably. Again, the reason for doing this is to sell you more stuff, show you more ads, and retain valuable personal data about you. A VPN can't do much about it. I'd recommend switching to a more private browser instead. IP, DNS, and WebRTC leaks. In theory, these should not happen when you use a VPN. However, just because you're using one doesn't guarantee that they won't. Bad VPNs leak one, two, or all three of those things all the time. 
An IP leak is what happens when your real IP address isn't properly hidden by the VPN. These are rare, even in the absolute worst of VPNs, but we have seen it happen. It's just about the most serious issue a VPN could ever experience. DNS leaks aren't too far behind. A DNS leak is when your DNS requests aren't properly tunneled by the VPN, instead being processed by your ISP, or, in other words, when the websites you're visiting are exposed. WebRTC leaks are a lot more common. When you use websites for video chatting, voice calling, or file sharing, your browser may use a technology called Web Real-Time Communication. WebRTC. The two devices that are communicating need to know each other's IP addresses to do so. If your VPN doesn't handle that process properly, your real IP address can leak. You need a good VPN to guarantee that all this won't happen. There's really no other solution. Traffic fingerprinting. A slightly more niche scenario, traffic fingerprinting is when your ISP is able to deduce what you're doing even with a VPN enabled. But I just told you that wasn't possible, right? Well, kinda. But what we discussed before is how your ISP can't see exactly what you're doing while using a VPN, and that's absolutely true. It won't know what website you visited or what file you've downloaded. However, if it really, really wanted to, it might be able to work out a top-level view of what you're doing. By analyzing the timing and density of the flow of data to and from your device, your ISP could, in theory, discern when you're streaming or when you're torrenting. Again, there's nothing a VPN can do about that, but just to put your mind at ease, it's very unlikely this will even happen in the first place, let alone have any effect on you. Social account tracking. If you're signed in and using Google Chrome to browse the internet while your VPN is connected, Google will still know what sites you visited. If you activate a VPN on your iPhone and download an app, Apple will know what you've downloaded. If you use a VPN while browsing Instagram or Facebook, Meta will still know exactly what you've tapped and swiped on. So many people forget this crucial step or perhaps don't even realize it. If anonymity is your goal, you basically cannot attain it so long as you are using these predatory, sneaky services, even with a VPN. All of your accounts and all of your connected devices are essentially tracking you at all times. Don't like it? Get rid of them. It's really the only solution, even if you do a deep dive into all of their privacy settings. I didn't intend to end on such a negative note there. It's not all bad. We've talked about a whole bunch of things that VPNs are great for. Use one already? Great. What's your favorite? Why do you use a VPN? Or perhaps you haven't signed up for one yet and we're using this video as research before taking the plunge. What are you looking forward to trying out? Let me know in the comments below. Like or subscribe if you feel like it and I'll see you in the next one.